Quinguinal, Ning Shinzi Tecumseh, Ninong Gie, Matawak, Ni Wilotamim Windak Pale. Hello, everyone. My name is Tecumseh. I come from the Matinecock people, or, well, actually, the Matawak people are the people of Long Island. And within that, I come from the Matinecock, the Montauket, and the Uncachug, and I am Turkey Clan. And I am thankful to be here today, uh, bringing together some different artists that we've had in the past with um, our series of socials, native socials. And we're spotlighting some local artists, two of our artists, their tribes are from Long Island. And then one of our artists is an artist who is in the Bronx, who has come and vended at our artist social in the past. So I'm really happy to have all of these people here today. Uh, it's an honor. And we, real quick, let me share a screen. Um, I definitely want to acknowledge not just the Matinecock land that Flushing Town Hall is on, but we also want to acknowledge all of the sister tribes that are also land in which we are around. So this is what we know as Siwanaki is one of our words for Long Island. Siwanaki includes Queens, Long Island, and Brooklyn. And then within Siwanaki, also known as Pamaaki, is uh, what's known as the 13 tribes of Long Island. And so we have the Matinecock are here. We have the Canarsie, the Rockaway, the Merrick, uh, the Massapequa, the Selkog, the Uncachug, the Shinnecock, Montaukett, Manhasset, uh, the Setauket, the Kochug, and the Nissaquag. So I want to acknowledge uh, all of our sister tribes. And I also wow. want to acknowledge my other relatives that work with me on the work that I do. Um, I thought I would pull up this painting because it's actually a painting by one of our guests, um, but it is different individuals in our community that really do a lot of work. So with that, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Gabrielle from Flushing Town Hall, as well as Lindsay um, from the Queens Museum, which are two co-hosts along with native tech. Thank you, Tecumseh. And as my Blackfoot relatives would say, Oki, and my Navajo friends would say, Yatse. I'm so thrilled to be here with Tecumseh and these amazing artists. Um, I've had the privilege to uh, enjoy and see the artwork of sunshine at our social and Dennis as well. I'm getting to know Durrell. Um, it's going to be a really enlightening evening. Um, before we really dig into things, I want to acknowledge on behalf of Flushing Town Hall that we are on the traditional land of the Matinecock people, one of the first people of New York and certainly the first people of Flushing Queens. Um, as you'll learn, the Matinecock continue to live and work on the lands of New York and particularly Queens. And Flushing Town Hall honors the elders who have stored, stewarded this land to this day. I also want to note, and I will drop into the um, chat, that this is a space that while uh, Flushing Town Hall believes in um, the, uh, a, you know, we want to create a forum for an open conversation, but we also uh, want to note that, you know, hate has no place here, and we want to engage in a respectful conversation. So um, 
if there are any issues, both Lindsay and I as moderators will strike any hate speech and racism uh, from the chat. I'm sure that's not going to happen, but um, I'm just putting that out there. And I'll turn it over to my colleague, Lindsay. Thanks, Gabrielle. Thank you, Tecumseh, um, for bringing us together, Flushing Town Hall and the Queen's Museum to present this really exciting panel uh, with Sunshine, Durrell, and Dennis. Um, we are so thrilled to be part of it um, and thrilled to have a connection. Also, you know, I want to use this opportunity from Queen's Museum um, to read our land acknowledgement as well, um, similar acknowledgement. So Queen's Museum is located in Flushing Meadows Corona Park in central Queens. Um, um, we would like to acknowledge the Muncie Lenape, Canarsie, Lakawe, or Rockaway, and Matinecock communities as stewards of the land and their past, present, and future generations. As both a museum of art and a historic site built on unceded indigenous lands, Queen's Museum recognizes the continual displacement of native people by the United States and is committed to working to dismantle the ongoing effects of this legacy. Queen's Museum stands with all those advancing indigenous resurgence and decolonization. We honor and pay respect to the indigenous knowledge bearers that have and continue to live in deep connection to the land. We invite you all to take action now by devoting time to taking care of the land, whether this be cleaning up your local park or donating to an indigenous led advocacy group. Um, and I'm so grateful to um, also note that um, Tecumseh Caesar has an exhibition on view at Queen's Museum um, called Water Connects Us All, which is presented as part of the Year of Uncertainty. And I'm dropping a link in the chat in case folks who might be in Queens um, to come check that out. Thank you, everyone. Welcome. Yeah, and before we start with our first presenter, I also want to acknowledge um, some of the past guests that we've had in last year's program. So we last year we had uh, Tahanish Tarrant with uh, Thunderbird Designs. We had um, Jeremy Dennis with Ma's House and uh, his artwork. We also had Lydia Chavez who is Unka Chug and she works with Wampa Magic. And we also had myself and I think that was it. Did I miss anybody else? I think those were all the artists that we've had we had last year. Um, it was Lydia Wallace Chavez works and Shane Weeks works are also on view at the museum alongside Tecumseh's, which is so exciting. Oh yes, that's yes, that's true too. Um, and Denise Dennis, I think, is the one that I left out. We also had Denise Dennis with us last time, um, so we had members of. Shinnecock, Uncachug, and Matinecock uh, in our last session. And then this time uh, we have our some of our other guests as well. So it's really exciting to be able to share, especially during these times um, where we're losing so many people. Um, so I definitely want to acknowledge, you know, that this is a time of coming together and really uh, giving an opportunity to, for us to take time where we're not just in our houses uh and yeah initiate to our panelists so we're going to start out with uh dennis red moon and uh, he's going to share his art and then we will go to Darrell hunter and then we will uh go to sunshine gums followed by a q a so you can take it away dennis uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Good to be here. Good to see everyone. Everyone looks beautiful. Um, I'd like to say thank you to Tecumseh. Thank you, Queens Museum. Thank you for, and, and also the other artists. Um, my name is Dennis Redmoon Darkeem. I am a descendant of the Yamasee Seminole Creek people of Florida, and I'm a visual artist, educator, Arthur, and business owner. Um, I've, I graduated from Pratt Institute. Um, after graduating, I began to, um, I guess, seek and desire more community. And through um, using my art, I, from young, uh, being involved in the powwow community, 
uh, from a young child competing. Um, I was a grass dancer, uh, men's tradition of Southern Strait, um, competed uh, bitty competitions along the East Coast um, through um, through uh, the powwows, I began to sell a lot of my work vending and began to realize that uh, my voice was pretty powerful within idea of not keeping things on the table and also being invited to other powwows or gatherings, which allowed me to get, gather and um, develop more relationship with other indigenous communities, um, especially up north here. Uh, so again, from creating, traveling, dancing and, and making work, I began to interact with people and a lot of my interactions um, begin to aware me on the understanding of people's understanding of indigenous culture, especially on the East Coast and understanding, I guess, how sometimes what they see in the media and what they read in books does not connect to what they really see um, here amongst indigenous communities, especially on the East Coast. So a lot of my work is to interrupt this idea of what indigenous work should look like. And that was something that I battled um, from not becoming a machine, creating products to fit someone's niche, to fit, to put in their bathroom or whatever it was, um, I wanted to stray away from that and also come to the realization of the harm that was doing um, to understanding that when people see indigenous artwork, that there are other things than teepees, there are other ideas of indigenous people than feathers. So, and also being authentic to indigenous people on the East Coast not having to be suffocated with these this imagery of having to maintain or live up to an expectation that's not real that's and then the idea of teaching our children these same beliefs and then we have media fighting so a lot of my work distracts that and also questions the idea of belonging um who and what belongs to us and where do we all belong um, along with that is the idea of understanding and making true connections of when things don't make sense in the sense of when it comes to true history, um, how do you confront that? And a lot of that is what I do through my work, confronting these ideas of what we also see every day, experience doesn't really um, meet our understanding of uh, e evolving as a community, um, connecting as a community, um, it creates more distraction. Um, so that's the, a lot of the grounding, um, this idea of racism, undertones of racism uh, when it comes to within our own community as indigenous people, uh, myself experiencing a lot, sometimes not knowing what to do with this energy, um, my power became my artwork and creating and then allowing my work to engage in create these different dialogues of um, creating real facts to real history. So what we think and what we know, what we read, and sometimes allowing people to investigate who are the people who are narrating these understandings of who we are or our history. But right now at the present time, um, I have a couple of shows and I'm in the process of um, moving my studio. And I recently had a studio visit so I thought it would be a good idea just to kind of show you some of the work I'm working on um, and proposing for a couple of exhibits that I'm going to be um, a part of this coming year. Um, and I also want to uh, share through the pandemic, uh, a lot of my thoughts became journals and a lot of these journals became writings. So I actually um, created some books um, one book is called 12 Tips for Upcoming Professional Artists. Um, these books you can find on Amazon. And my other book is called uh, So You Think Your Organization Supports Diversity. Um, these are books that from experience and kind of um, so much this idea of people wanting me to 
give my feelings or expressions about certain things, but idea of um, what do I get from this? So this idea of sharing, but it's also always teaching, always having to be the educator with educating people about, you know, some certain things, you know, they spent many years in college and all this money, but, you know, don't understand where they live at, who was there before them, or the importance of these things. So I think now I'm gonna take you around uh, my studio is not that big, but show you a couple of works of things that I'm working on. Uh, give me one moment. So um, along with an artist, I'm an educator. Uh, I teach high school and junior high school students. So a lot of my work I bring into my classroom and my students. Um, are inspired from some of the themes in the work, and a lot of it focuses on identity. And I think um, as an educator, it's important that I allow students to explore their own identity, um, especially that's important in my class, just because what other class would they be able to do this, um, especially teaching mostly students of color. So this is a piece, um, a lot of my work is from recyclable materials. Uh, and this is inspired by seminal patchwork. Uh, people know seminal, um, a lot of people know seminals for their patchwork. And patchwork is um, pieces of fabric that uh, were kind of tossed as waste. And these little pieces of fabric became kind of symbols and kind of a language within the seminal tribe of people knowing who you belong to, what clan you are from, or who you are a descendant of. So, I repurposed these are actually Metro cards. And I know you can see them. These are cut Metro cards to, and each day of these Metro cards, I would co cut a new symbol. And I was inspired from this piece to, um, from the Mayan, our people call Aztec calendar. And it's the idea of each day represents is represented by a symbol. And this is a sculpture that created called 360. And it's called 360 because of the idea of playing off of the shadows. And this is made from phone wire. So it's the cord that usually goes around, you know, um, so everything is digital. I had all this wire. So the base is wire and it's wrapped in beads. Um, this piece is a collage, it was commissioned. It was one of three pieces that was commissioned. Um, this piece wasn't selected, but I like this piece a lot. This piece was, it was for a non-for-profit in Harlem. And I took their past brochures, flyers, pamphlets, and I created um, a bunch of collages that they raffled off for a fundraiser. Um, this was one of them. This is all pieces from that year's, like June, June 2015. This is one of their um, programs. Um, so this piece here, I'm working on, I have a show at Wave Hill um, coming up. Um, I just wanted to put out there, I'm in a show right now, before I forget, it's called outcropping it's at the hampton museum uh the, the art center but this piece here i'm going to show a couple of them this piece is inspired by um mayan and aztec uh artifacts in relation to the people and thinking about history and the idea of um why a lot of imagery was damaged and it being a distraction of certain people being able to understand and research their history. So these images connect to that. This is one. Uh, I did um, a number of collages 
of rappers that I really like. This is also collages incorporating um, Mayan artifacts, uh, Omec. So a lot of my work, um, I do a, a lot of applying for commissions, maybe for public artwork or maybe for um, exhibits. So I create large um, series of works. Uh, this is another piece, um, still trying to figure out if I'm finished or not. Uh, these are the shakers. And this piece is in respect to the stomp dance. Um, in the southeast. This is another piece I'm kind of working on now. Um, these are some collages that I created in the past. And this was the idea of identity playing with um, who are we when we're supposed to be kind of. So this idea of, um, you know, when we put on regalia, who are we when we take regalia off and the connections. Um, the designs are articles that I read that inspired this work about the idea of indigenous people um, really can't get no sleep in the sense of working and performing, basically. These are some abstract pieces I'm working for on an for exhibit, some collage work. These are from exhibit, you can see them. Lighting from a uh, show that was here that was in the Bronx. And these are the last two collage and painting. And also um, had a couple of op opportunities to do some residencies um, in Maine, Wyoming, um, Florida. Uh, and getting to meet other indigenous artists and kind of um, again teaching that indigenous people here on the East Coast are still here and they may not always look the way they think that they should or <clears throat> follow whatever rules, protocols. But just wanted to share a little bit of my work. I hope I inspired um, someone out there. And again, I have a couple of shows. You can check out my website again. Um, and I'll be around for questions. All right, thank you so much, everyone. All right, Anishik. And uh, yeah, I just want to um, say Anishik to Dennis because I have been doing traditional art uh, for a very long time, but just like, uh, Dennis, I actually started off apprenticing a vendor, um, an elder in the community. And then I started to make my own stuff. And so I've learned like a lot of stuff through learning through other elders and stuff like that. But Dennis was actually the one who challenged me to change my thought process of not just being a vendor, but also being an artist. And considering myself to be an artist, especially because I do wampum work, and that's a traditional art that is uh, for a long time been used in history as well as in contemporary use. So uh, I know that Dennis has inspired me, but also pushed me to be an artist and not only to be an artist, but also to help uplift other artists. Uh, so I want to say thank you to Dennis for that. Uh, uh, Tecumseh, can, can I say one thing? Uh, thank you, Tecumseh. I just want to acknowledge two people. Um, Lord Oxidine, he's no longer with us, but he was a very big inspiration for me to look at indigenous art. And also Dan um, Simmons, he is another artist. We went to school together. I just want to acknowledge another amazing artist um, from the East Coast. Thank you. Yeah, and our, our next speaker um, is Darrell Hunter, who 
is someone who I definitely admire his art uh, so much so that I commissioned him to make a piece for me. Um, but, you know, it's I think it's always great to support your relatives. Um, and, yeah, it's I think when you see Darrell's artwork, you can really see the passion behind it and also how he really tries to capture um either the individual or the piece that he's painting, but especially uh, his relatives as well. So I'll pass it over to you, Durrell. All right. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, good to meet you. You know, uh, thanks for having me. Um, you know, I'm glad to be a part of this panel. Uh, so about me, um, since I could remember, you know, I've been into art. I think uh, everybody in here has in some kind of way. But uh, maybe like six years ago, I decided to start, a paint, uh, start painting. And I didn't know how to paint, never painted before. Uh, I got into an art show and, you know, the piece that I did, it was cool for back then, but I was like, man, like I could really do something with this. So I started thinking like, what do I want to, my art to stand for? And really the only thing I could think of was like being Shinnecock, you know? Like I felt like it was important, you know, to use my talent to, uh, you know, just kind of speak about things that a lot of people don't experience. So like growing up on our land, um, you know, with people that are in this panel, uh, people that aren't learning about my tribe, uh, like where we came from, you know, just all of it kind of just came to me and I'm like, okay, like this is what I'm going to start painting. So as I started painting, I was drawn to like abstract work, um, other abstract artists, like I like realism and expressionism. So I kind of want my art to focus around those three things. So uh, using my family members, uh, people within the native and black community that are doing important things. Like I try to use them and use uh, colors and strokes, textures, patterns, you know, all of that to kind of give the piece like a feeling, uh, like, a, you know, like me kind of like expressing myself and what I think about. So I can go, let me see, give me one second. So just recently, um, I saw an article where they were like doing construction somewhere, they found some bones, you know, and there was, you know, we had, they had to investigate, come to find out, you know, that's uh, like some of our ancestral burial grounds, there was a big battle over it. And I felt like, you know, this was something, you know, good to capture. And there was a, uh, a image taken by my cousin that moved me a lot. So this piece I created, uh, Defend the Land. So I chose, uh, you know, the water, you know, to represent people of the shore, the wealth, and, you know, just to kind of hone in on the Shinnecock tribal seal. And this piece here of a Native woman standing, you know, in guard of her land, you know, bones in the mound, you know, a more modern tool that's used to, you know, tear down things take over land. And I just wanted to, you know, hone in on that with this piece, you know, something that was thought provoking and really meant something that's, uh, you know, going on today. Last year, I was, I had a job. Um, I got laid off because of COVID. So once again, it's just me and my art. So I'm like, okay, I want to do something modern. Um, still using members from my tribe to show like confidence. And I saw an image that moved me and created this piece. So I titled it COVID-19. It's a pretty big piece, I gotta zoom out. And it's basically, you know, three people and within their posture, you just see confidence, no worry. You know, they're masked up. Um, the splatter pattern here kind of, signifies like, you know, contaminated pollution. And this piece I created here, and this also features members from our tribe. 
And that piece is titled uh, COVID-19 2020. I painted that after I got laid off. Uh, I'm not really into politics, but, you know, like I said, I pay attention to certain things here and there. So uh, Secretary Deborah Hallen got elected and I felt like, you know, Native Americans probably, you know, were proud of that. Like, if you think about it from where Native people come from, like just based off of the knowledge that I have to a Native person being elected within politics, I decided to paint a picture of Secretary Deborah Allen. And uh, I know she's in charge of like some kind of Eagle reservation. So I wanted the background to like signify like flight, you know, like going up. So that's why I chose like the wisping, like kind of lines for this piece, trying to be realistic, but at the same time, abstract with, uh, you know, some expressionism. And I'm just gonna stop the video to uh, switch the paintings. Um, where we come from to where we are, you know, means a lot to me as an artist. And once again, I, I use someone from one of our sister tribes. I met him at a powwow. Uh, the last powwow I went to in 2018. And I did this piece, I call it a uh, traditional today. So I use this, you know, with his wampum band, you know, him just being in a traditional, you know, style fashion. I use gold just to, uh, you know, implement royalty because that means a lot to me, you know, like uh, thinking about where we come from and then the sky's line in the background just for modernism. Um, let me see, what's next, what's next? So kind of like what Dennis was talking about, about, uh, you know, like being Native American, but you don't look a certain kind of way. I did um, a little research and it was about the meshing of like slaves and Native Americans, you know, during a time of like uh, when slaves were being freed and things like that. And how a lot of Native tribes are actually, you know, Black Indians to a certain extent because I am, but at the same time, you know, I know what's important on both sides. So once again, I chose uh, African American figure, but even still, it's just a black Indian kind of represented myself and the whale in the water represented Shinnecock. And then like deep off in the distance, I put some, some ships in there. And these were all pieces I created, uh, you know, last year. I was really into my art in uh, 2021. And let me see what else here. I started wanting to do portraits with abstract. So this piece here, Red Fox, the muse in this piece, like that's her name. And I wanted the portrait to be, you know, abstract. I wanted, to, wanted it to be as abstract as possible. So I used a lot of different, you know, stroke patterns. And within that just kind of, you know, form the portrait of her. And then the last piece that I did in 2021 would be a portrait of someone that I grew up with actually on the reservation. And it's not the biggest, but it's one of the biggest and it's of uh, sunshine. So I really, you know, respect sunshine and what she does and asked her permission one day <laughs> if I could use her in my pieces. And she, you know, she was just like, oh, sure. Cause she remembers the time when I just used to, we used to be hanging out and I'd just be sketching and drawing and things like that. So, you know, using her in my pieces means a lot. And when I saw this image, you know, once again, implementing the abstract, uh, it's titled Sunshine in the Woods, but I just wanted it to implement like power, hope, you know, for Native Americans like all over because, you know, I know it's bad on like how people see it, um, how we're treated, you know, just the whole image overall. So I kind of want to bring, bring that out, you know, within my artwork. Uh, Native women that have gone missing, 
I know that was a campaign that some more people that I grew up with were involved in pretty heavily. If I'm not mistaken, I think Sunshine was involved in it too, but I didn't use her in this piece. Um, I met Callie at a, uh, at a powwow and got to talk to her. And she's a uh, professional boxer, native as well. Um, her and another cousin of mine, Sinead Bullock, they were into this pretty heavy. I saw on, uh, on some of their posts and things like that. So I decided to paint them together and kind of like a very warrior, almost like stern, you know, standing guard, ready to defend anything that came across them as bringing harm or something like that. And that's what inspired me to paint this piece. Um, I have other work. That's uh, all of the native pieces I have at the time. I had another painting of Sunshine, but uh, I was doing an Uber ride and was talking to this guy about my work and he wanted to see it and he actually liked it and decided to collect it. So I don't have it anymore, but that was a pretty important piece to me. Um, I wish I could turn it. This is pretty big. It's almost as big as my wall. So I can't really like turn it. Uh, this piece here, I painted just a complete abstract piece. Uh, I titled it Colorblind because I'm colorblind. But while I was in art school, I took color theory. So I know if the tube tells me it's blue, it's blue, you know, regardless of what I think it is. But blues and purples and greens and browns kind of get me messed up. Uh, let me see what other pieces could I share since I have some time. Mm. I'll just flip through them. Uh, so I have a lot. Uh, I get on display, like I display my work in galleries. I've been on display since I've been in Florida, uh, New York. Um, I have collectors in like California, New York, Florida, Georgia. It's been like six years so far, but I just don't stop. I just keep painting. Oh, this piece here, Emerging Turtle. So I did this uh, kind of to symbolize my art. You know, me being Shinnecock, having uh, turtles on our tribal seal. I just decided to do like a seascape with a turtle head poking out. So that was a pretty cool piece working on. Like I like doing landscapes and things like that. Um, you know, just trying out different things, trying to see where my artistry could take me. There's an abstract piece I did. Uh, you can see all of my work on, um, you know, Instagram uh, at Inhale Art. I post like progress paintings while I'm working on it. And yeah, this was a great opportunity to showcase my work and just talk about what inspires me. Uh, this piece here, Beautiful Extinction. So like I love tigers, you know, nature. And, uh, you know, it just sucks that tigers are almost extinct. So I had to, I had to paint one. Let me turn the camera around. So yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's been my journey so far. That was last year, we're at the beginning of 2022 and there's gonna be, you know, a lot more pieces created, definitely symbolizing, you know, Shinnecock and Native Americans everywhere. So thanks for, you know, viewing my work. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Tabutni. Um, and yeah, Darrell's work is, uh, you know, is really cool because it highlights different things. You know, um, the picture that he drew of the burial ground that was being desecrated, I believe that was Hawthorne Road. Um, and somebody who sits on the Grace Protection Warrior Society, it is great to see that um, those different issues that we're dealing with, there's many different ways to talk about them. And I think art is definitely one of those. Um, and then, you know, highlighting Secretary uh, Deb Hall, who's the Secretary of Department of Interior. Um, it's great, as well as... Uh, Shanae Bullock and uh, Callie Reese, who does a lot of work as well, and actually was the first female fighter 
to be on HBO, I believe. Um, so yeah, definitely thank you for, for sharing those. Um, and I definitely have some insightful questions to ask you later on. Uh, but our next speaker is um, someone who's really awesome as well. And um, I've worked with on a number of things as well as I've grown up. I think I've known Sunshine probably most, if not half, over half my life. Uh, we've danced at powwows as well as ceremony and um, education. We've done education programs mm -hmm. together. And uh, yeah, she makes some amazing art and regalia. So I'm going to turn it over to Sunshine Gums. And for those who don't know, the Shinnecock Reservation is located near Southampton. I won't say it's in Southampton because I think Southampton is in Shinnecock. And not the other way around. Um, but for those who don't know, that is where uh, the Shinnecock Reservation on Long Island uh, exists. All right. Hello, my name is Sunshine Gums. I am from the Shinnecock Nation out here in Southampton, Long Island, New York. Um, I'm going to be sharing a PowerPoint, so just give me a moment to pull that up for you. Okay, let's see if I can remember how to do this. All right, can you see that okay? We don't see anything yet. Okay, hold on one moment. Okay, let's, let's see. So, share screen. Let's see. You still can't see it? No. Hmm. All right, hold on. Sorry, I'm not so tech savvy. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hmm. Sorry for the delay. Um, let's see. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here. Um, So sorry for the delay. Okay, um, still not seeing it? Not seeing it. And you put share your whole screen, right? Um, yeah, hold on one moment. Let me see. Hold on one second. So sorry. So maybe in the meantime, while Sunshine is uh, 
dealing with the technical difficulties. Yeah, I'm sorry. I cannot figure out how to share this screen. Um, it's just working before. Um, hmm, I don't know what's going on there. Maybe do you want to try like uh, leaving, coming back into the Zoom? Um, okay. Yeah, maybe I'll try doing that. So and sorry. Also, no worries. Technical difficulties is the <laughs> is what we have to deal yeah. with. with uh, you know, doing things on Zoom. Yeah. Sunshine, I'm also gonna send you a, a link to a site called WeTransfer where you can send me your. Oh. Can Christine you see now? something? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh, there we, go. we got some action here. <laughs> okay. All right. Are we seeing? We see it beautifully now. Yes. You're all set. Okay, good. Sorry for the delay. All right. <laughs> so, um, my name is Sunshine Gums. I'm an Eastern Woodland cultural artist and designer. Um, I am from the Shinnecock Nation, located on the eastern end of Long Island in Southampton, New York. I make authentic handcrafted native art and designs. I'm also the owner of Sunshine Gums Designs, LLC, and I also do um, photography of Shinnecock. I was born and raised on the Shinnecock Nation. We are the people of the Stony Shores. My mother is Michelle Johnson and my father is Edward Gums. They're both Shinnecock. I was born and raised to understand who I am and where I come from. Traditions and lessons of my culture have been instilled in me since birth. I grew up on the lands of Shinnecock. So from a very young age, I have always had an appreciation and admiration for my homelands and always took advantage of playing and traveling our trails through our woods, walking our beaches, walking the beaches of our stony shores, swimming, clamming, canoeing, and fishing in our waters. Much of my inspiration comes from the beauty of Shinnecock. So I'm thankful for all of the experiences that have led me to grow and discover my passion for art and design. Uh, these are some images of our stony shores that I've taken. Um, I like to get out there as often as I can to absorb the medicine of our shores. And I gather a lot of um, our natural shells that I use for uh, much of my work. So this is some of my photography of Shinnecock. This is uh, my serenity, my peace. This is where I love to go and um, just, you know, be in peace. Uh, my inspiration for all that I do and all that I am first and foremost comes from my mother um, and all that she's instilled in me. I learned much of my skills from her. Um, she started out making our regalias and doing sewing. So I was always standing over her shoulder and that's where I learned my skills uh, to become a seamstress and learning how to make regalias myself. Um, my love for my homelands and the beauty and medicine I'm surrounded by um, is truly healing. So, um, you know, just being out there in the woods, being in our beaches, absorbing the medicines that I'm surrounded by daily, you know, inspires me and is um, always just uplifting for my spirit. I've always been creative and uh, enjoy trying new things. I love all mediums of art, but found my true passion in sewing and creating clothes for myself, altering clothes and, of course, making regalias. Um, what it means to be a Native artist in the 21st century? Well, representing who you are by expressing it through your art and your skills that I do. You know, I travel the powwow circuit. Um, I teach regalia making classes. Um, and I just like, you know, trying, I've always tried new things. So um, also having the opportunity to go out there and share your art, teaching and educating on who we are and where we come from. Um, our art is our medicine and, um, letting, you know, letting people know that we are still here through our art. Um, these are some images of my mother and my grandmother. Um, they are my inspiration. My grandmother, she, um, owned the, the Shinnecock Indian Outpost, and she also had a vendor for many, many years. So, um, I now have a vendor 
And um, my mother as well, she has a food vendor. So we've invent, I grew up on the powwow trail, traveling to different powwows. So, um, you know, they've inspired me my entire life. And now that I'm a, a vendor, you know, that, that came from them. So, uh, mosquito medicine. This is just some images that I've taken of um, shells of our stony shores. Um, I love, like I said, capturing the beauty of our stony shores. It's among my favorite things to do, getting out there, absorbing the medicines that we are surrounded by. These are some more images of Shinnecock, our beautiful stony shores. Some more shells of our stony shores that I've captured, some photography. From the lands to my hands now. I'm always in the woods, I'm always on the beach, I'm always out there capturing and observing and seeing you know, what's out there, what I can use next, uh, what gifts nature has to offer. I just feel like when I'm out there and uh, I'm finding the things that I'm gonna use for my art, um, it's just such a connection because every single individual piece that I find, it's just like I connect with it in that moment in time and it, it's just so meaningful to me. So these are some images of just a few things that I've had in my hands from my stony shores. Natural vibes, these are just some natural things that I've used. Um, I work with shells all the time. That's among the main things that I use in my artwork. Um, these are some deer, deer toes, deer legs that I've made into cuffs. And these are some turkey feathers that I've worked with. Um, I also do some hunting here and there. So um, these are some turkey feathers that I've acquired. These are some more images. Uh, of our stony shores and the shells, what they look like in the natural state before I make them even more beautiful than I find them. And then this is just the process uh, of shining them up and bringing out the beauty of them, close up of the beauty. It's just um, so amazing to me, each and every individual design on the shells. I'm just always blown away by the beauty. Um, that just so often gets overlooked. I'm out there walking on the beach and, you know, you just, not the average person will look down and observe all the beauty that we're surrounded by. So to capture, you know, each and every bit of beauty that I can is just such a blessing. Some more images of the process uh, and how I shine them, lay them out. Uh, nature inspires me. I also do some wood burning um, and this is uh, just some photography of a box turtle from here on Shinnecock. So that's where I got the inspiration for this piece. Um, and this is uh, some wood burning that I've done on a fan handle that I made. This is um, the fan handle that I made and it's got the box turtle on it. It has got a clamshell, an oyster, a scallop, deer antler and a whale tail, all representative of the East Coast and me as a Shinnecock woman. This is uh, the process of my fan that I had made for myself. Um, I also wrapped these eagle feathers. This is some of the work that I've done as well. Tedious little job, but um, the process of making your regalia and pieces for your regalia um, is very personal. And so you wanna take your time uh, working on everything that you do because you're putting your medicine into it. So, you know, it's very important to take your time um, on your work. Um, this is another image of the box turtle. This is a rattle that I made um, using some rawhide and I painted on it my own expression of um, a box turtle. And um, it's a little rattle. And so that's just among some of the work that I've done before, making some rattles, the inspiration of our box turtles. Uh, the Woods of Shinnecock, some photography I've taken. I've got tons and tons of uh, images of our woods and our trails. Um, I know the trail, our trails on Shinnecock, like the back of my hand. So just being out there, um, connecting with mother nature, having that peace, and um, just absorbing the medicines that I'm surrounded by is always healing for me and just my inspiration, you know, inspiration for everything that I do with my art. Um, 
dream catcher making. I, I make dream catchers. So um, this is just some images of the process of um, going out there, gathering the branches. Um, I make them out of grapevines. So um, these are just some images of some great fresh grapevines that I've gathered, um, cutting them up to different sizes, stripping them down, um, laying them out and making them into hoops and making it into a dream catcher. So everything that I make is um, handmade, um, gathered from our woods here on Shinnecock, our territory here on Shinnecock, and made with love and medicine from me. Um, this is some images of some regalias that I've had over the years. And um, I've been dancing since I was a young child. So this is just uh, some transitions of my growth in uh, re regalia making that I've done. These are some images of youth tea dresses that I've made for some young girls. Uh, these are some images of youth Shinnecock young girls that I've made dresses for. Um, I was also a cultural enrichment teacher, so um, I did some regalia making classes and have um, made many regalias for people in my community and also have taught them to make regalias for themselves. And um, now that I have been teaching the classes, um, you know, people are comfortable and confident in making their own regalias for themselves. And that's what it's all about is people, you know, learning and acquiring the skills for themselves so that they can um, make their own and carry their own medicine. And now these girls are um, all grown now and quite a few of them are artists now today, young Shinnecock artists. Uh, these are some youth regalias that I've made quite a while ago but I'm um, just to share some images of uh, things that I've made back in the past. For the kids, always making for the kids. Um, like I said, I was a culture and enrichment teacher. So um, working with the kids and making sure they're out there dancing is so important to me. And, you know, to be somebody in my community that the youth looks up to um, is super important. Um, so these are just some images of some family, some cousins that, um, that I've made uh, jingle dresses for. This is another youth jingle dress um, that I made a long time ago. She's grown now. And um, this was among one of the first dresses that I made a long time ago. So just sharing that. This is my little cousin Ashanti Gums. Um, I made this dress for her a long, long time ago. She's a jingle dress dancer. So this is um, my little cousin. These are some fancy shawl regalias that I made for um, some young girls in our community. Uh, my vendor, our vendor, um, is called Eastern Echoes. Um, I am among one of the artists on this vendor. Um, my sister, Sierra Gums, my cousin, Shanae Bullock, and my sister, Starleaf Gums. Um, we all travel the powwow circuit. I've been vending for maybe the last, I want to say, seven to eight, uh, maybe longer than that now, um, years. The East Coast from Canada, um, all the way down South Carolina, North Carolina. Um, so, you know, we've been traveling the powwow circuit for many years now and sharing our art and sharing our Eastern woodland culture. Um, so um, my family has been, like I said, vending for many, many years. So, you know, now that we've been vending, it's just, it's gonna be something that's continual. And, you know, I'm glad that we are able to share um, who we are, along the trails. These are some images of some jewelry that I make. These are some jingle earrings, um, long leather fringe earrings, and um, some shells, some shell earrings that I work with. Some handcrafted leather work. Uh, I do a lot of work with leathers. So these are some leather bracelets, um, some leather little clutch bags, leather fringe bracelets, and these are some hair clips. Moccasins, 
Um, I make tons of moccasins. These are just a few pairs of some youth moccasins, some baby moccasins that I've made. Uh, I do make moccasins of all styles, tall boot moccasins, pucker toe moccasins, um, low cut moccasins. So these are just a few images of some that I've made over the years, different styles. This is a jingle dress order that I've done. Um, like I said, I do a lot of regalias, so I'll be sharing a few different um, orders that I've done over the years. This is a jingle dress that I did for one of our young Shinnecock girls. This is another set that I did for one of our Shinnecock girls up here with the crown and matching hair pieces, leggings and the moccasins and a belt. Um, another jingle dress that I did for one of our girls up here on Shinnecock. Uh, this is a fancy shawl regalia that um, I did many years ago for um, one of our girls from our sister tribe in uh, Mashpee. These are some ribbon shirts that I've made. I also make ribbon shirts um, for some people that I've made over the years. Just some images of the work that I've done. Uh, keeping our youth encouraged and inspired. Now these are some images of my nieces, cousins. This is Shinnecock Pow Wow. Um, me dancing in the arena with my little cousin Khaleesi. Uh, these are some of the regalias that I've made. And um, I've, like I said, done a lot of work with our youth. So it's uh, super important to be that example for our youth. Um, doing the cultural enrichment classes and working with them um, is just such an inspiration and so inspiring to me to be able to be an example and to continually um, inspire our kids to want to take part in their culture, to have understanding of who they are, and to be able to build and create and make their regalias and have confidence in, um, in their dance, in what they're dancing for, and why they're making their regalias. And, you know, everything is a lesson and everything is teaching. So when I do um, make and create, I make sure that I'm teaching and instilling in them um, what they need to be carrying on as well. Uh, this is my contact information. Um, I do have an Etsy page that you can check out. I do have a Facebook page and an Instagram page as well that I share um, my work on, um, things that I do, my photography. So you can check out anything that I've been doing on those sites. Um, to boot name. Thank you so much, and um, I'm glad to have been here. Thank you, Queens Museum, Flushing Town Hall, um, for having me. And I'm glad to be able to share with you tonight. All right, uh, Anishi, for sharing all that stuff. Yeah, and um, I will, I guess if we could spotlight all our panelists. That would be great. And since Sunshine, you went last, um, I'll you I'll give you my first question, and that question would be, what is the experience that you have when you get to see someone wearing regalia you've created? Um, it is such an overwhelmingly good feeling. Um, I still see regalias that I've made over 15 years ago um, being worn. So it's uh, such a beautiful thing to see that they are still being passed down and that our youth are still wearing them. So um, it's a beautiful feeling. And that's what it's all about, being able to keep the tradition going and carrying it on in that way. So it means a lot to me. Anishik. And a similar question, but a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, Dennis, I know that you have done work teaching uh, classes to either make rattles or regalia with different tribes. 
and I know we've spoken about that before. Um, can you tell me, like, what is that feeling like being able to teach Native kids how to make, you know, their own regalia and stuff like that? Well, like, what's that, you know, what's that feeling like and why is that, you know, so important to you? Um, uh, I teach uh, students in my community, uh, teach not that far from where I live in the Bronx. Um, so teaching is kind of like my second nature is what I do, especially with young, but I think the idea of working with native indigenous youth and the idea of, um, having this full, this amount, abundance of knowledge and having youth that are desiring this knowledge, um, may it be dancing, may it be singing, may it be creating a drum, whatever it is knowing that they will use this knowledge way beyond me. Um, just, uh, I've worked for many years with the Satellicot uh, tribe um, with their youth, um, everything from uh, dancing to singing to creating um, regalia and uh, instruments, uh, everyday items, uh, and seeing these young, like, young children to young adults to now grown adults with kids and just knowing that this knowledge I taught them is actually being continued. So mm -hmm. that's something that, you know, words can't really express, but you definitely know, like, I'm moving in the right direction and, you know, it's good energy. So I'm a big believer in like making sure this energy, this medicine is um, continued in rotation. So, you know, certain names, certain people just don't exist. I mean, don't disappear. Um, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. And Darrell, um, you had a pretty awesome show during Indigenous Peoples Day at Shinnecock in the, um, I believe it was at, oh, what, what is the location again? I'm, I'm drawing. Like, we were at Raindrops. Yeah, Raindrops, Raindrops. So, um, I know that was amazing for me to see everyone or whatever, but how, what was that feeling having a show in your community and getting to see all your, you know, cousins and aunties, you know, admiring yeah, them was... and also getting to see in person. Cause it's definitely, it's definitely more powerful in person, but it's also awesome on your Instagram. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It was a, it was a great experience, man. Like it, uh, motivational inspiring uh just the way people you know wanted to hear and were interested in everything and the ability for me to like talk about the work uh even with people you know from the tribe who have never seen my work or like younger people who didn't know you know they knew I could draw but not you know to the level that I've gone to since you know I've been painting um Bro, it was just inspirational, man. Motivation to keep going. Like, it's almost like reassuring that I'm on the right path. You know, it's still just the beginning. Like, I've met, you know, artists who have been painting for, you know, 20 years, bro. And, like, now it's like, I can't wait until, you know, I can say I've been painting for 20 years and see what I'm actually able, you know, to create or, like, what inspires me you know, to create something even better than what I created last time. So it was great, man. Like, I, I still think about it. <laughs> I definitely look forward to uh, to that happening again. Um, one person had asked if Sunshine lives on Shinnecock. She does live on Shinnecock. Um, yes, I do. So my next question is actually a cross- uh, artist question and I'm wondering if any of the artists on this panel have a question for another artist on this panel hmm. <laughs> see what you did I don't know <laughs> right <laughs> uh, artist to maybe, artist we maybe know not a, maybe not a question <laughs> maybe not a question but just a uh so what I've learned, like when I'm like now that I'm painting the way that I'm painting is uh, how important it is for like uh, other creative energy. 
you know, like me being mm -hmm. by myself in my studio painting, like sometimes like as entertaining as it is, it can sometimes get boring or like I'll notice my work becoming like repetitive, but I never mm -hmm. like want to challenge my work until I talk to somebody or just, you know, to somebody else who can like understand like how I feel like when I'm creating and things like that. Mm -hmm. So like when Dennis, when Dennis was talking, I'm like, dang, like a lot of the things that inspire him inspire me, you know, like that's like that kind of stuff is like, you know, it just lets you know, like you're not by yourself. Right. Um, and, you know, it's, it's almost like a saying, like how he how he does his work and how I do my work are two are two different styles, but the inspiration is from the same place. So yes. I think like to me, it's cool to be a part of something like that. Absolutely. I just wanted to uh, piggyback on that. I think um, this right here is kind of, uh, I think, why I create work. Um, this idea of uh, connecting. And um, I see many faces at powwows, social events. And I think like, you know, we all don't know what each other do. We don't know. We just know, you know, oh, he vends, he vends. But I uh -huh. think the idea, the magnitude of how much power and how much like knowledge we all like possess. And I just want to like <laughs> give acknowledgement to the creator and everyone. Like this is a blessing. And I'm just so happy to be a part of what all of this learn about everyone's work here. Uh, it's a blessing. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for um, for that. Uh, both those those comments are, are really awesome. And um, Sunshine, I know that you have been a part of a lot of different things that are happening, bringing back paddle tour, I mean, uh, canoe journeys, mm -hmm. as well as... Yeah. Um, a lot of ceremonies that we're bringing back and all that. And so I'm wondering mm -hmm. how does like canoeing, you know, when you're in that machine, how does that affect your artwork? Um, being in the canoe, being in the water, being in our woods, um, being on our beaches is all medicine for me and just grounds me and um, just lets me reconnect and find balance within myself, within um, Mother Earth. So um, it really helps me to figure out what I want to do next. And, you know, everything that I'm surrounded by inspires me. So it's all medicine, you know, it's all medicine that helps lift my spirit and encourage me you know, encourages me. Um, it's my element. It's where I love to be. And so um, that for me is uplifting for my spirits, you know. Anishik. And um, Darrell, I'm wondering, um, you know, you have so much great work and we were talking the other day and I'm wondering what is something you would like to, what is a, some artwork you would like to do maybe that, um, you know, you haven't done yet? What is like, if you could do anything, you know, uh, what would that be? All right, so uh, maybe a few months ago, you know, I uh, was trying to get displayed in some art galleries. Um, I ended up going to this gallery, speaking to the curator, and uh, he, you know, he was like, you know, like all of your paintings look look wonderful, but like, have you ever thought about painting something bigger? And I'm like, nah, you know, I can't, uh, you know, they can't fit in my car. So he was like, nah, just buy a canvas roll, you know, roll it out and, you know, paint the picture and then wrap the canvas. Uh, I had never done it before. So they allowed me to, well, what I did was I went, I bought a roll of canvas. I painted three pieces, uh, these two back here, and the red fox piece it was like six yards worth of canvas but they let me stretch the pieces in the gallery and also display them in the gallery so a lot of times before i start another piece like it's almost like i don't really know what i'm gonna do but it's like do i want to challenge myself or do i just kind of want to hone in on something you know maybe recreate or revamp something i'm already doing and you know figure it out in the newest piece but lately I've been thinking about doing a piece that's like 10 feet, uh, 
like a lot a very large piece and not just having one uh like focal point you know not just one muse uh, i know i wanted to be shinnecock inspired uh the last time i was up there for the indigenous show like it was it was so short i wasn't there i really didn't have the time but i'm gonna take some you know just get some inspiration get some photos i've even mentioned the sunshine about like joining her or one of her trail walks you know really just like soaking all of that in because um like I spent a few years on our reservation but I, I wasn't like raised there so but now that I'm doing my art and I know what inspires my art and what's going to drive me to create like my piece you know like the one I know it's going to be Shinnecott related so I want to do like a 10 foot like social piece like something that's going to make people stand there look at it like actually look at it and try to figure out everything that's going on you know like on some like old renaissance art style kind of kind of deal and it would it would probably be you know like a powwow kind of thing because you know we know because we attend them and we're involved in them but there's a lot going on you know during powwow and like the like the right kind of view on that like i feel like you know that would kind of keep people just looking at it, watching people standing in line at the food stands, you know, maybe collage it, you know, from different angles, because, you know, you got the fry bread stand over here, and then this is going on, and then the dance competition, and I would just want to incorporate all of that in, like, one very large piece, so that's probably, like, like, that's where I'm at right now, but I haven't created it yet. You have to do, like, the panorama view on your phone or something. <laughs> or, or awesome. collage it or collage it together like yeah. that's what i'm saying it's like it's still in it's it's in my head i just haven't got to it yet but it's coming that's great um and another question uh this comes from one of our viewers they ask they would love to know how we maintain our connection to our culture cultural traditions so if anybody wants to take that question feel free um, do by exactly doing these kinds of things, um, making our artwork, um, sharing who we are through our artwork. Um, like I said, I was a cultural enrichment teacher, so teaching our youth, instilling it in our youth, um, those are among the ways that we, you know, maintain our traditions. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. Because for me, you know, I don't, I don't live on Shinnecock at the moment. But, you know, I, it's like after a while, you just kind of miss it. It's like, yo, like, I got to go back. And then you go back, you talk to people, you experience things, you learn different things. And then you bring that back home and, and you have a whole new well of creative inspiration to draw from and create new work. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's how it works out for me. Mm -hmm. And also seeking things out on my own, though. Like, uh, you know, just learning things about, like, the land. Uh, learning that wampum, like which was a rare shell, you could only find it, you know, where we are, and that was like a main source of currency. Like I would, I never knew that, but you know, seeking that kind of information, you know, you get it. And then I put that in my artwork, yeah. and then when people ask me, "Well, why did you do that?" You know, if they're open to it, they'll learn something new. Uh, I guess um, really fast. I think um, my connection to water um, is important. My connection to the moon, my connection to land. So making sure I learn how to treat, learn how to use these um, abundance that what is, that is what's supplied to me. Um, and also being an advocate for um, the truth so the idea is when I hear something that's not correct, and when I hear things that are make-believe, I have, I have the responsibility to speak up. So those are ways that I maintain um, connections to just not just my people, but just indigenous people all over, but mainly here on the East Coast, um, you know, getting from a lot of turmoil, false history, just all of that. How do we change that is through us. 
and we can't allow people to say wrong things. So being responsible for what we hear and what we say. Yeah, I do also want to add to that. Um, part of this is to show that there is a living culture in Native history um, mm -hmm. and that there are contemporary artists, but also there are a lot of things that we keep within our communities. So people may not know about it, but we actively on Long Island practice ceremonies in mm -hmm. Uspatuck, which is a mastic, Shinnecock, uh, Queens all over. Um, we have language classes. Actually, I'm in the language class with uh, Sunshine currently. And so there's a lot of things that we're doing to keep our traditions going. Um, everything from repatriating ancestors that have been taken from their graves to protecting sacred sites, as well as uh, praying at sacred sites. So there, our history is very much still alive and yeah. we still practice, even if it's not necessarily publicly enough that uh, people who are not from our communities wouldn't know about it. But mm -hmm. that's the point of this presentation really is to just show some um, artists that are using their artworks as their conduit to claim and say, you know, we are still here, but also native history and culture is not stagnant. And I also want to acknowledge the fact that in the United States and in Canada for a very long time, Native Americans couldn't publicly practice their, um, their religion. They couldn't practice their language. Um, they were taken into boarding schools, especially a lot of people on, on Long Island, and they were forced to speak English. So that's really what this program is kind of about, is to show how Natives are reclaiming their culture through art um, on Long Island, as well as uh, those who live in the area, such as um, Dennis, who lives in the Bronx. So I think with that, we're almost um, at the end of our program. I'm wondering if Gabrielle or um, anyone else from either Flushing Town Hall or the Queens Museum has any questions or comments that they want to make before we end. Um. Thank you, Tecumseh. We're just um, profoundly grateful for the generosity of the spirits of Sunshine, Dennis, Durrell, Tecumseh to navigate all this and help us organize and, and put together this panel, bringing together some really brilliant young artists in the field. Um, for our audiences on Facebook, on YouTube, on Zoom, I really encourage you to further explore these incredible artists. And Tecumseh uh, is kind of taken a back seat in terms of his own artwork, but he's an incredible wampum artist and educator himself. Please go to their um, websites, which I posted in the chat but you can also find their bios and websites on uh, Flushing Town Hall's um, page um, and also at the Queens Museum. And um, if there are any educators, any uh, school teachers, principals uh, from grade school on up, uh, Tecumseh and his dad, Chief Reggie, work with Flushing Town Hall and a number of other organizations. We partner with them and bring them to school students in Queens and throughout New York. And really, education is where it's at. We can really educate young minds and they can learn about the native communities of New York and the East Coast. So they have a bigger um, or a broader view of what life is like today and that uh, they know that our communities, our Native communities are still here. So I just want to applaud Tecumseh, Sunshine, Dennis, and Darrell. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for sharing your artwork. And I 
encourage our audiences to continue to learn more. Um, Thank you so much for having uh, us. Always a pleasure, yeah. Lindsay, do you have anything that you want to say before we uh, end? I think Lindsay lost her connection. I don't see her. All right. Well, if not, um, yeah, I just want to say Anishik to everybody for coming. Um, we also say to Bhutani on yeah, Long too. Island. Um, and yeah, it's really special time. I want to encourage everybody to be uh, very careful you know, in the current climate that we're in, taking care of your elders, uh, calling your elders and making sure that they're they're doing well. And that yes. they feel appreciated as well because they have laid the groundwork for us to be here today. Um, and yeah, I just want to hope that everybody uh, is doing well. And for those who aren't doing well, um, you know, during these times, it's important that we just take care of each other and check up on each other. So yes. um, with that, uh, we say uh, Muskanawish. Or Mush since Mush. there's a bunch of you, there's, I guess it's Musclenau Runnamo. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks for coming yes. uh, to our chat. Yes, thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Nice. Thank everyone really the artists as well. Thank you very much. All right.